Good day, brothers and sisters. You are welcome to the conclusive part of this uh, edition of neighborhoodness. You know, so we the first video I released previously before this one, we talk about uh, how we should do what, how we should, how we can obtain eternity through our what, our relationship with our neighbors. You know. So, but most people they don't really understand this thing. So that is why I want to use this um, opportunity to conclude this video with this um, what do we call it the concluding part of this uh, of this uh, book of the Bible, so that we may have a real understanding. So today we want to go to the book of uh, Luke, chapter ten. So we are going to see what the Lord said about these things again this is another parable we are going to look into because in that other video i said okay it's your neighbor you know your relationship with your neighbor that will determine your eternity you know we read the book of uh, matthew yesterday you know of which i explained some of the things but today i want to go to another very good parable that was spoken by the lord himself because why are we using the parable of the lord is because of the fact that um, when you see when the lord came you know the purpose of jesus coming on earth is to tell us the will of what of the father what the father wants so that is why we the words of jesus even in the bible is written with read so that we may know the, the, the severity of all these things so i want us to focus mostly on jesus words today by by reading the book of um, of Luke 10 verse 25 it says and behold a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him say master what shall I do to inherit what life just as I said earlier because life is very important but this a lawyer the person who, who is well studied you know they know about the situation of life you understand so this kind of a person you know they, they, they've known the up and downs of life so they want to know what is this that thing that could make them to what to obtain eternal life so let's see the response of jesus because i received a message say oh no it's by doing this doing that that is when you can enter heaven so that is why i want us to go to this place and look at it so that was the question then the lord jesus said unto him that's my uh, luke chapter 10 verse 26 he said unto him what is written in the law how readest thou and he answered and said thou shalt love the lord god that god with all thy heart with all thy soul with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself you see and he said unto him thus answer right this do and that what shall live you see jesus said this man answer right because of what you shall love god you understand with all your heart with all your soul with all your spirit with all your mind and you shall love your neighbor just as you love yourself so if you do these things then that is when what you can enter heaven so now the issue is that god we don't see god you see it but what who we see every day is your neighbor you see so that is why in this edition so we are emphasizing on neighbor because we didn't see god if really you are a worshiper of god you see it it will show the way you treat your neighbor you see, they are said in the previous video, people who say, oh, we are good, we are nice, uh, this and that. Let us see. Let other people talk of you. Not you talking of yourself and be a good person. You understand? Let other people talk of you if you are really what? A good person. So that is what Jesus was speaking here. So let's see what happened here. And Jesus answering then, but he, that's the lawyer, was willing to justify and say unto Jesus, who is my neighbor? You see, who is that my neighbor? He wants to know who is your neighbor. Then let's see what Jesus said. And Jesus answering said, uh, saying, that's um, Luke chapter 10 verse 30. And Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among his which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead, you know. And by chance, there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. He said, and likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed on on the other side. 
But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion what? on him. You see, I went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, you know, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him. And whatsoever thou spend them more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. You see, this is the parable. So we want to talk about this parable. You see, when Jesus was talking about who is our neighbor, our neighbor is not. That's your child, your father, your mother, things like that, as we used to think. People, we, we will gain things from people that are our responsibilities. You know, our neighbor mostly, you know, they are not people that they are our responsibility, but they are, these are people we're supposed to be responsible for. You understand? Indirectly. So that is what Jesus was saying here. So we have three sets of people that our Savior made an example of. One, he talked about a priest. A priest represents the church, you know, a person who's supposed to be near to God, a person who is worshipping God, who is close to heaven. He prays every day, he does everything, he does sacrifices to God, he offers gift to God, he's an holy man. So this is when the Lord made the first example. When he was going, he saw this man. Who was this man? The Bible says the man has no name, he's just a certain man. You see, we don't know where he came from. Maybe he's a foreigner that has no identity. You see, he's not even a, a person that is popular. You see, so that the Bible didn't give him a, they say just a certain man, a just a no how person, a person who is just going by. You understand me? So this is the, what our Lord told us. So he said this certain man, he was traveling. Then and robbers, they met him. You know, he said he was traveling from war. From, uh, from Jericho to, from Jerusalem to Jericho. Let me check it again. From Jericho. Just a minute, please. I want to be specific. Just a minute. Okay. Let's see the story. But it's certain. Okay. Verse. Just a minute. Okay. And Jesus said. Okay, he said a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. You know, when you see this place from Jerusalem to Jericho, you see it is a very significant route. That's why Jesus mentioned it. What is in that route? Because between these two people, uh, to these two points, there is only there is a place that is a desert. If you have had opportunity to go to the Holy Land, you will see that place. You know, the place is what? It's a place that is... Um, you know, a, a, a jungle, let, let, don't, don't let me call it a jungle, a place that is full of rocks that arm robber can walk. They hide inside those lockets of the of the rock. You understand? It's mountains, hills, they have is where mostly it's around the the, 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 the the Dead Sea area, you know, where they saw most of this Bible. It, they have caves, you understand? So most of these thieves you know, they normally hide in that place because these two places, they are significant towns. So there are people, when they are moving from these places, you know, when you want to go and worship, you carry money to do offering, to pay tithe, and many things they do in those days. So the thieves know that this route, there is always where people are having money. So that is why they will not lock up in those in those uh, places of wilderness, in those a mountain area so that when people come they attack them take their money and go so everybody knows about it so that was the exact point jesus was all was speaking of this man was moving from jericho i mean from jerusalem to jericho the thieves attacked him when they attacked him what happened they stripped him of all his goods all that he had so what now happened is that when they stripped him then they left him half dead 
half dead means that he could not have ability to stand up you know to move the body you understand he cannot move all the the body again so he just life there just breathing you know so but the issue was that when this thing happened the first person that passed by was the priest so the priest when he passed by maybe the priest is going to jerusalem you know to do worship then instead when he saw the man he just looked for another way he didn't want to even near that dead body. You know, he looked for another because he's thinking of all himself. He doesn't want to, to defile himself, you know, maybe to, to help or to, to give a, a, a helping hand so that this person will not defile me. Then I need to wash again because in those days, you are not to near the dead body. You are not to do these things like that. You know, he just looked for another way. You understand? And he went his way without helping this man. Then another person came who is a Levite. A Levite is also a person who is a worker. You know, as we talk of Osha, we talk of the uh, choir, we talk of those deacon, deaconess. These are, these are what people in the church who are doing the work of God. You see, they are the one who sing, they are the one who do, who occupy the church. These are the second set of people Jesus mentioned. So when he mentioned this person, then the person to when he came, he still even, he went. You know, why did he go there? Let me go and see this person. Maybe it's, a, it's, it's, it's an Israeli. Maybe it's my village person. When he went there, he looked the man, he turned him, he sees his face, say, oh, this man is a foreigner. It's not uh, even what, it's not part of us. What did he do? He left him and went his way. That is what Jesus said. You know, why did he go there? Because of interest. What is my interest in this person? That is what we do today. You know, we, we cannot help people because this one is not from my village. This one is not from of my relative. This one, what will I gain financially from him or her? You understand? So the, he left the, the, the man. So that was the second example. Then the third man that came was a Samaritan. So in one of my videos, I discussed about Samaritan, you know, but I'll just briefly talked about it. Who is a Samaritan? A Samaritan is, is a person that is ungodly. You see, a person that knows no God, that is the real meaning, the real meaning of, of a Samaritan, I don't worship her. Even at times you can say foreigner. You see, so when we see the Bible, the history of 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 of, of Samaria, you know, a Samaritan is a person they name after Samaria. So we saw in the Bible that there's northern Israel and southern Israel. But it was not so before. When God delivered the children of Israel from Egypt, he brought them to the promised land. So they had only one king. You know, the King David, a Saul, from Saul King David. When David died, his son, you know, Solomon, he took over. So they had only one kingdom, the United Kingdom of Israel. But in our culture, at the time of Solomon, you know, Solomon started to marry many wives. The Bible says he had a thousand wives, 700 wives, and 300 world concubines. You know, so these people, mostly God tell them that, please don't marry foreigner. Not that because God doesn't like foreigner. Because most of these Gentile nations as are there, you know, they don't know God. They are worshipping idols. They worship Kemush. They worship different type of idols. You see, so that God now commanded the Israeli that if you want to marry, marry from your own people who knows Jehovah, who knows God. Don't marry an unbeliever. So, but what happened? Solomon did not hear. You go because he has fame, he has money, God has blessed him. Just as I said in my in one of my videos that the purpose why God gives us money is that to live to please him, to live a godly life. But most of all, when we receive money from God, what do we do? We start on godly life. You men will start to carry women. Women now will start to carry men, start to be rude to their husband. Nobody can talk to them in the society. So the same thing happened to all. To, to, to Solomon. That is why you see God most of the time makes some Christian to be poor so that we will be humble because when there is money people will, you you will not be controlled again. Nothing can control the word of God cannot control you. Nobody people cannot talk to you. So this is exactly what happened to Solomon. When Solomon did what? He, he, he had some a much, a much money. No word there was peace because God delighted in David because David he, is a man that is after God's own heart. God declared of him that this man is always seeking of things to please God. There are so many occasions David, the father of Solomon, you see, you know, when he would think that how can he be living in a fine house that the ark of God who brought them from Egypt, 
will not stay in ten. He said, let me build out for the Lord. You see, he always think of many things. There was one time when they want to capture that time Jerusalem is not under their control. When his armies, they want to face Jerusalem. The, the armies that are God, of the Gentiles that were in Jerusalem that time, they were so strong. You see, you know, so so they were unable to enter. You know, the, the, the Jerusalem was so fortified. But when they withdraw, they retreated. Then David and his men, they were seen in, in the in the in in the in the hole you know where they hid themselves so some of his men they now decide okay this is what they will do then there was a test you know david was testing as he was testing he's, he's seeking for a fine water to drink spring water because the water around they are water from ponds you know and those dirty water they have been managing then he just voiced it as ah i wish i would see you know the 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 the, the spring water of siloam you know in jerusalem if i see to drink he just mentioned it so that what well, to encourage the soldier that we must capture this jerusalem so during the process when the men heard you know some of his strong men in the night the military they now went you know they lay ambush they crawl they went to jerusalem they went to that place you know the pool the, the spring water they, they brought the water and brought it to you to david in the morning how david was surprised how are you people they say see the spring water you like to drink from jerusalem ah david was surprised did you risk your life if these people the garrison of these people is so heavy how did you risk your life to go and bring this water oh he said no it's because you king ah you want we are for you you see then the king took it said, ah if he drinks this in this the blood of the people say no he poured it onto the law he said it turn this water he give this spring water god drink for so this is a man that is after god's heart so god loves him so much that god said okay what i will do your son you know you are whole now you're about to die your son all the good things that i want to do for you i will continue your son solomon so that was the privilege solomon had so he has no war he had money he had riches god gave him wisdom you know so because of that you know solomon prospered so but what solomon did he went to marry another one all these foreign women he loved this uh, foreign women marry egyptian marry lebanese marry the uh, persian marry whatsoever even come came to africa marry Ethiopian women you see this is what solomon did and when he married all these people you know then they lured him you know women you know they know how to manipulate people you know some we say they are doing bad day you know in their shrine they invite daddy to come daddy will be the one to call the cake daddy will be the one to 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 bless them so solomon now is getting old getting to 60 70 then solomon will now go because this is the wife i love so he went there we'll go and cut cake we are in the house of kemosh we are in the house of Baal. You see, these are the, the devil, devils. You see, so that is what Solomon, he defied the law of God. You know, at times, they will say, okay, daddy, before you come in, you have to bow down for this image. You know, so that to cut the cake, you have to kiss the feet of, you see, they develop different tricks, just like Jezebel, to make the Solomon to walk to be worshipping idol. So Solomon will not go there. So the thing displaced the law. Then God said, okay, because you have done this, I will cut ten tribes from you. I gave you two tribes. Not because of you, because of my promise to David your father. Because God is not a man. God doesn't change us. We change every day. You know, he loved David. He said he's going to make sure that David, his children will be staying on the throne till the end. That's why when you see Israel today, they call it the throne of King David. Even till now, when Jesus Christ will come, we will say, Blessed are thou, the son of David. You see, so this is the promises of God unto David. So now what happened? When the son, his name is called Rehoboam, he took over. You see, we see that stories in in, in, in first Kings, second Kings. We see the all the stories of these things. So now, when he took over, then God did it. You know, ten tribe now decide say, no, we are tired of all of Solomon's children is reign. They want a new person. Then they choose the servant of Solomon that is called Jeroboam. You see, so when they choose the servant. Then they serve and uh, then they did not divide. Ten tribes went for him. That is the northern kingdom. So when they went after Jeroboam, then Jeroboam fortified himself. He made his own capital. So when he made his own capital, then during the process, you know, then the people, they go to Jerusalem to worship God. 
So when they go to Jerusalem to worship God, which is a territory that belongs to what? Rehoboam, that's the son of Solomon. So Jeroboam, who is in the north, who is the servant of Solomon, who is not king of the northern kingdom, you know, didn't want them to go to Jerusalem. So he called all the priests. You know, there was a, 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 a priest at that time that is called Ahijah. You see, Ahijah was a chilo. You know, he was the one who saw the vision. Say, this is the will of God. Ahijah bought a new clothes. He turned into 12 and he called the servant. That's Jeroboam. That's the servant of Solomon. Say, thus says the Lord, take 10 out of these clothes. This is what God said, you will rule over ten times. These two, two, two pieces that remain, leave it there, that is for Solomon and his son. That was the vision. So when Solomon had that vision, people now told Solomon, say they have seen vision, say God will call the kingdom. Then Solomon was looking for Ijah to kill and to kill Jeroboam. So Jeroboam had to run to Egypt. When he got to Egypt, the Egyptian king gave him the daughter to marry. So he was in an asylum there until Solomon died. The same thing with Ijah. Ijah went to Damascus to Syria and be seen there, which is not the territory of Israel, until Solomon died. When Solomon died, they came back. So when God established Jeroboam, he had the ten kingdom, which is the northern kingdom of Israel, which is the capital is Samaria we are talking about. So what happened? He now decided, that, okay, they want to build church. Then he called all the prophets and the priests. Those ones say, no, God has not spoken of another church. The only church God needed is that one that he has established in what? In Jerusalem, which is the southern, southern kingdom that pertained unto what? Solomon and his son Rehoboam. Then, then the guy was afraid. He said, okay, if people are now moving from this north to the south to go and worship in another country what happened uh, Rehoboam Re Re the son of Solomon may convince them and they will now say okay we uh, we're forgiving you let's come back again under you so he now said no then the priest said no you cannot build another church we ask have to uh, to to hear from God so when they consult God God said no that is the only church so then the king became annoyed that's the king of the north that Rehoboam I mean Jeroboam he became annoyed he said okay what will happen he would do away with the, the priest and the, 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 the prophet. So he ignored them. What did he do? He built a new church. You see, he built it in the north. In Samaria, he built big church. But this church, the prophet of God and the priest of God, they did not go. So because they did not go, well, it now looked like a shame. Then he said, okay, we'll do something. Then he called the worship of Baal, you know, so that they should come out. Be worshiping there, you know. So what they do now? They now dress like priests in Jerusalem. They put on the priestly garment. They organize their own church, just as we have today. You have all these fake churches, you know. They they will be worshiping, copying people. So okay, this is the real church. They will come and copy you. You think that these are worshippers, but they just want to see how you are doing the thing, how you are doing your praise, how you are doing your preaching, how you how you do everything. So they will study. That is how Jeroboam. You know, that is what he did, the son of Nebat. Well, he, he copied everything. Then he now turned from a church in the north. He said, okay, nobody should war, should go to war, to Jerusalem. And what did he do? You know, because he had foreigners, all the foreign people who are from other nations are worshipping idol. Those who now said, no, let us put idol. Then they put animal bull they now they make a very big bull they put a bull that's cow they put it say this is their god who brought them out of israel what is bull bull is a sign of devil when you see any place they put bull because the devil has four faces they say look like lion he look like bull he look like a eagle and he looks like a, a man these are the four four look that the bible says devil has. So when you see, so they just bring bull. This is what the children of Israel also did when they were what? In, uh, in, the, in, in the wilderness. When they want to make idol, they make a calf. You understand? They make, they make a calf, a bull, like that. They, they start to, in form of bull, they start to worship it. So Moses said they, are worship, they were worshipping devil. So this is the church that was this man from Jeroboam. He formed a devil's church. So that now they started to worship what? The idol. So when they started worshipping idol, you see, then he neglected all the priests. So the priests, they went away from him. So because of that, God became annoyed. 
with Jeroboam. You know that he has made him what a king. So God now decided to, to take away the kingdom from him after many years. Because God promised him the kingdom. So he lived on for 80 years. Then God took away the kingdom. His general took over. When his army general took over, that one too is to continue with idolatry. That one didn't want to unite people. He didn't want to ask people to go to Jerusalem. Because the same sin, the fear of Jeroboam, came on, on, on to him also. He said, oh, how will he ask people to go to Jerusalem? So, like his master, what did he do? He said, people should continue in the worship of Baal. So, this is how they were worshipping. That one also God removed him before the third person. You know, the four we have Ahab, the father of Ahab, he bought the mountain from one man called Samer. So, so that is why they call it Samaria. You understand? And he made it the capital. He made it, he built the place beautiful because it was on a mountain. You saw? So when he built, he made it the capital of northern Israel. So what now happened? They start many king rule, but they continue in idolatry until God decided to judge them. So when God now judged Samaria, what did he do? God brought the Assyrian. You know, when the Assyrian came, they take over, they, they, they came to attack northern Israel. When they attacked northern Israel, they took all of them away as what? Well, as uh, they, they deported them because they knew that these people unite because of all this uh, church they are doing. Then they now took them, this, they, are, they are church, they are claiming it's church, but this is a, 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 a Baal worship uh, church. So he now attacked this place, he took their king things like that. But during the process, the Assyrians now think that what shall we do? Then they went to India, bring some people from India and put them in this northern Samaria. They went to Syria, bring some people. People who are not Israeli, they mix them up. They mix the people up so that all the people will not unite. You understand? This is just a political system because they know that when there is unity, Israeli versus Israeli, they unite together, they will be forming rebellion. You know? So what they do? They went back to Asia. They went to Persia. Packed the people there. They brought them to be living there. Then they took some Israeli. They took them to Persia. They took they went to India. Packed some people from India and brought them to Israel. Packed some Israeli. And packed them to India. Then they went to to Pakistan. All those people Bangladesh. Packed people from Bangladesh. Put them in Israel. Packed that in, in Samaria and carried so. So that is why the real citizen of world of Samaria they are not pure Israeli. So that is why you see in the Bible when Jesus went to world. To, to 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 that place you know to to Samaria when you go to the book of John chapter 4 you know there was a woman they say she's a Jew you understand because when Jesus came everybody suspected who are you are you a real Jew or you are those Indians they brought or you are uh, from Bangladesh or you are from Syria or you are from other nation Mesopotamia you know they want to know so that is why when you read the Bible they will say this is the district of the Jews this is where the real Jews are staying these other people they are Samaria who are foreigner you know they are not real Israeli you see so this is how the story of Samaritan comes about when you see Jesus when he was sending the disciple out he said they should go and preach if you go to the book of Matthew chapter 10 Jesus was speaking there say look Make sure you don't enter the house of Samaritan. What Jesus was meeting, all those foreign people, you know, go to the house of Israeli. You understand? Why the house of Israeli? Not that Jesus hated one, a foreigner. But that time, he asked them to carry the gospel to them. You know, because a typical Israeli knows God. They know Jehovah. They know the promises of Jehovah. So that when you go to any house, if you say, Shalom, Shalom, they will understand that you have come in the with the peace of the Lord. But when you speak to an India or a Mesopotamian say shalom, he doesn't understand what it means. Or you are telling him God will do this, God will do that. He's walking he, he, he doesn't understand what you are saying. But an Israeli who knows about God, who the forefather were brought from Israel, when you are talking Jehovah, they know you are talking of their God. When you are talking about the promises of God that is laid in the Bible, they knew that war. You are talking about war. Their own God they will understand. So that's what Jesus said. Say Please, when you go to that place, look for the house of Israeli, not foreigner, who will not understand what, what you are discussing. That is what Jesus meant. When you go to that book of Matthew, when he sent out the ten, the twelve apostles to go and preach, he said, make sure that you go to the house of Israeli. You know, when you knock there, when you say shalom, they too will 
return it back. They will understand. Not be say you say shalom, then they don't understand what is the meaning of shalom. You see, when you know that this man doesn't know the meaning, you look for another door who is what an Israeli. So when they say shalom, those one reply shalom. You know this an Israeli how. So when you open the Bible, say the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. The, you know he understands that this is our forefather. He's talking of our patron. They will give you what they give you a listing here. This is what God wants to do. So that is how it comes to be. Uh, to be. That is the differences when they call you a Samaritan. It means say, you are those people who don't know God. Those people they bring from other nations, from Mesopotamia, from Apashia, from India, and all over the places. You are not a what? An Israeli. You are a person who doesn't know God. So that is why when they call Jesus, even Jesus, when he was when he go to the gospel of Saint John chapter four five, you see when they were arguing with Jesus, when Jesus say he was talking to them before Abraham as he was, you know that's chapter 8, you know, of Gospel of St. John, so they became, they say you are a Samaritan, you are not a Jew you see, what they mean that, that Jesus is also what, a foreigner so we have to do what understand all these things so that when we are reading the Bible we may know when Jesus say a Samaritan, so it means that somebody what, that does not know God you see, so this is what Jesus meant by the story of what of a Samaritan. So in this place, we saw that word. Jesus now mentioned what the thought, the man who was who, who had the the, 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 the 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 person who was sick. It's a Samaritan. And when you talk of a Samaritan, a person that does what that doesn't know God. So how can this person be doing the will of God? So that is the purpose of this one of this message to me. So we now said in that book, he said the Samaritan, a person that does not know God, is the one that does good, that did who, who hurt this man. You know, I mean, Jesus now take a Samaritan, and the person doesn't know God, and they say that person will be the one to inherit life. Why? Because he's taking care of his neighbor. That is why you see today, you see some people, like when you see some of these people, Little, they 
they are now asking for big money. They can mention 20,000 pennies here, 20,000 dinners, or 20,000 dealers, or 20,000 pounds in this way. He said just two pounds, you know, two pennies, two, two, you know, just two pieces. That is what he gave, you know, just for the first day. That's what Jesus said. Because this is what the laboring principle. We are trying to tell everyone of all. So this is what Jesus told. Then Jesus now asked these people who are learned. He now said, look, among all these people, which one what? Did the right thing? That is what they ask. He said, which one did a good work here? They said the one who showed mercy. Not the one that's in the church. Not the choir man. Not, you know, but this person they say is an unbeliever. This one that is doing many things that people take, oh, this one not be, you know, it take care of the neighbor. So that is why. But the question, don't forget, they asked Jesus, what shall we do to inherit life? That is what Jesus said. Help your neighbor. Do good to your neighbor. The works you do to your neighbor to help your neighbor is what one. God is going to what? Is going to count as what? As what? For you as a good person to enter what? To enter heaven. So this is, he said, then in the book of Matthew chapter 5, Jesus was still speaking about religion. You know, people love religion so much that anything about religion, you know, they talk is something of just profession. You understand? Profession. When we talk of profession, you come and, and, and start to speak. Uh, I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, this and that. You know, but Jesus is telling us religion is not that. You understand? It's not profession. What religion is, is action. What do you do to your neighbor? That your neighbor you are planning evil for every day. He's the one to determine your kingdom. If you will enter heaven, or you go to hell. So that is why we have to be careful. All our thought, it should not be evil. The first word, you know, in the book of Genesis, chapter 6, God destroyed it. Why? Because he said the poor people are evil. You know, if we're against you, not against God, you cannot kill God, you cannot fight God, but against one another. You see, the thought of man against other man is evil. How you are going to destroy this person, how you are going to make life worse for somebody. You see, that is why God destroyed the first world. Apart from that, you know, how you are going to block person, person want to progress now, you'll be the one to, to block the progress. He's looking for war. You know how you get war, you will block the person. The document he has, you may even dodge it. You know, the information. He needs you not give it to that person. So that is what the Lord, the Lord may God destroy the first world. The thought of man every day is continually evil against his neighbor. So God cares much. The same thing with Sodom and Gomorrah. They, not, they did not sin against God. When they see a foreigner, they ask sex, they beat foreigner, foreigner need food because that place is a rich country. That's why you see some rich countries today. When they just see foreigner, they hate them. They don't want to give them food. But God said, he loves foreigners. He wants to give them food and give them clothes. That is what God says. So we should be treating foreigners well. We should be treating orphans well. We should be treating anybody that is weak very well. You see some country, all the cripple, disabled, they hated them. They don't help them. But where am I? They take them serious. Any cripple or disabled, they give them Pre preeminence, you know, they give them a chance in everything. If you go to a post office or anywhere, if a cripple come, is the one to force or a pregnant person, they give them what a uh, precedence, you know, we call it precedence. They say, yeah, Okay, no, you go first. That's why I've been waiting for 10 hours. You just came because you are disabled. Please go first. This is what God delights upon. But what are we doing in our own? A place in Africa, if somebody is disabled, you know, we don't even allow them to enter bus. The government itself doesn't make provision for the cripple. But here, if you see the boss, they make provision for the cripple. You see, even any houses they build, they'll make a provision for the cripple. You see, to make what? Life easy for them. But what do we do here? You know, I mean, what do we do in our place in Africa? No, eh? cripple, they don't have right to house. They don't have right to car. They don't have right to public ball. It's only we who are okay. You understand? This is what we do. You know, by that you see, we are, we are, we are going against God because the idols 
culture we are brought you know we think of only ourselves so that is why we don't think of the weak you know the weak the, the crippled the disabled the 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 people who are blind they don't make provision for them you know they will sit in the house of parliament all they are thinking is only themselves how they have one house house they want to turn it to 20 houses they will not think of the poor people the disabled people the blind the crippled how do we create house for them how do we make this life beautiful for them if you see where hammer you will see some people even they are born with some genetic uh, problem you know but if it's in africa they, they they look down on them they even sing in africa to mock even people who have orange bar those who are blind they'll be singing and be rejoicing because those people are not well formed they are malformed you see these are the bad things we are doing because god does not like this thing so how will you go to heaven at the end you not carry garment go to church and be singing be praising god that is what jesus is saying your neighbor is very important what have you do to help the weak that is the message of this good samaritan that man was weak he can not move his leg he cannot move his body he's half dead if that good man the samaritan the bible did not even call him good we are the one that who is calling him good the bible jesus just a samaritan just a mere man you see when he went there he carried this man he helped him he gave him for uh, the the first aid he took him he paid you know he said if this man when he finished please allow him to go you understand the rest debt don't in debt him don't give, don't put the burden upon this this sick man i will pay you when i come back if you please anything that is necessary do these things that this man may live you see this is what god said we should do that is the true religion as the bible says you know when you go to the book of james he said the true religion is it to visit the fatherless and the widows you know to take care of them in their affliction you know what we do today we are helping those who will give us back those who will give us money our heart it may be that's how we'll be looking the brain will be calculate what has this man got has he got money or oh, this woman what will i get from her okay which work is he doing what is your immigration status if it's africa what house have you got how uh, what is your father what is your name have you got name in this country are you a mondo politician who have embezzled money when he hears embezzlement say yes i will marry you sir you see this is what we do the bible says this thing will carry us nowhere but a fire you know this is the ways of the devil so it's a fire this thing will carry us to so we have to change today if you want to inherit eternal life you have to take care of the weak your neighbor those you will do for you know because if you do that is why you see the western world we say oh these people uh, racism you know i have one one message there's no racism anywhere because people here they are responsible for their neighbor that's why you see everybody's coming even passing through sea you know somebody was telling me about his testimony he said they say hey, water will kill them i said no if he kill him no problem let him just enter this europe let it grease italy anywhere because of what he said you know if he comes here they will take care of him he's a weak person in africa africa is taking care of you the riches is there but it's not for you he will eat it eat it give it to his children keep the remaining even give those places where he kept he kept the money say white people eat it because you hate your neighbor you hate you. you don't think of your neighbor only you eat in the morning politician you don't think of your neighbor rich man you will eat you not think of your neighbor ah this people are living in this poor zone what are, have they eaten this morning eh? have they clothed is it life well with them light they give you i go and bring transformer so that uh, everybody can have light no you carry the money you put it in your pocket then you buy automatic generator that was uh, a silent generator multi-million generator so the only you will be receiving fun and hasty you know you'll be drinking cold water so that those people they should go and die when they are in the eat malaria dysentery all this thing will come upon them and you are now you say you are giving money to the church so that uh, that church there you give them tight and offering the bible says you are a candidate of hell a place of destruction even a tarawa so that is why we are employing people today you should try and see let's go back to this book of this good samaritan let's see what he did you know this this, this parable that our lord himself it is not manner the bible says in the book of hebrew that is even when uh, the angels they were talking before in the olden day, but that the lord himself has come to speak to all prophet were talking people did not hear tell that why god said okay jesus come so if god himself have come to tell you 
which a skill will you have? So that is why Jesus told us this parable. To enter heaven, you have to take care of your neighbor. You know, your neighbor is very important. You have to take care of him. You have to think of him. Before you think of as you are thinking yourself, you think of your neighbor. Ah, as you are eating money food, think of your neighbor. As you are wearing fine cloth, think of your neighbor. What is he wearing? Is he wearing la the rag? As you are buying for yourself, buy for your neighbor. This is things that make us to enter heaven. So that is why Jesus was speaking in the place. I go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 22 I read. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother, without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, fool, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of what? Of a fire. You see, he said, therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there remember that thy brother has ought against thee. Leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. So this is what Jesus, he said, your brother, your neighbor is very important. You are going to church now. You are dancing. You are dancing. You want to do worship. You want to give gift. You know, they will carry gift. Ah, these are fruit. Oh, God has made me fruitful in the year. Let me bring one tenth of my fruit. So thank God, God, you are so good. God said, if you remember, not you offending your brother, but your brother is not happy with you. You understand? He said, drop your gift. Don't do the, it's the, God is not interested in it. God is interested in that, your neighbor, your brother, go and reconcile with him. You know, when you reconcile with him, say, okay, forgive you. You understand? Then you make peace with him. Then you come and offer your gift to God. Because that gift is not as, as important as what? Well, as your brother. You know, don't make people to be annoyed. Don't offend your brother. That's why you go to some churches today. You will see them, they will be fighting. You see, you tell the pastor, let's say to him, say, no, they should continue. You see, what is important to beat the drum, people should drop off friend and go home. People are fighting. Choir master is fighting what? with choir mistress. Drum beater is fighting with piano. Be uh, a person is uh, pressing piano. You understand? The song leader is fighting with what? The 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 person who is what? He's doing backup for for her or him. You see, this is what in the church. You understand? And you say, are you worshipping God? No, that is not worshipping of God. That is a synagogue of Satan. According to the Bible, this is where Satan dwells. Because you are not doing the will of God. God said here, if you have your phone body offend you, you know, not even you, you offend person. You know, somebody now is not happy with you. You know, or a voice has said, you offend me. Reconcile with him. Leave church. Leave church out of this issue. That is what the Bible is saying. In this book of Matthew 5, 24, lift your gift first and go and reconcile with your brother, with your friend, with your neighbor. Reconcile with them. That one is more important to God. Then you can walk. Come and do what? Come and make your offering. I think we understand all these things. This is not a time of religion, but a time of what? Of true worship, so that we will not deceive ourselves. Oh, uh, no problem. God, I pay tight. God, you know, I, uh, I, they worship you all the time. I, they sing. I, they fast. I, they do most of this thing in the Bible. In the Bible, when we go to the book of Luke, chapter eighteen, verse ten, it's still the same thing. It said two people went to the temple to pray. One is a Pharisee, a person who knows God. Let me put it, a pastor. You see, when he got there, you know, Jesus was telling us about their two prayers. Jesus was there, was listening to them. He was listening to them. What did the pastor did? That the Pharisee, he said, God, I thank you. I fast twice a week. I pay tight. I do this. I do that. You know, and what did he say? He said, I'm not like this useless neighbor. Eh? I'm not like this Gentile, this Pharisee, this one who don't know God. You see, that is what he was saying in the house of God. But this other one, who is a poor person, he said, God, have mercy upon me. I mean, he's not looking down the white, he not cause the wise man, say, oh, this useless man, we be sure the money where he forgive me, only in the chopper. You see, he mind his business, you understand? So that is why God doesn't want us to look down our neighbor, you see? But more what we did, what we normally do, we look down our neighbor, who he be? You, you have calculated it from here to to not be this thing you get, not be the, this one. You see, you look down on person. And what does Proverbs 11 verse 12 says? He said, he that is void of of wisdom is the one that despises the neighbor. A foolish person 
you look down on your neighbor. But God is so wise. He had made everything. Not one person. He will give you one gift. He give another one. So that all these gifts will come, come together and use it for the glory of for, for, for the glory of the society. But why is today there's no progress? Especially in Africa. You know, why? Because this one has his gift, he keeps it to himself. He's looking down on other. Say, waiting this one gets. You understand? So when you look on other, but that other gift, you need it. With that gift, when you combine it all your own, that is when you can come up. That's when you can achieve something. So that is why when you see these white people, when you see them, they will tell their children that this is uh, this work of uh, of grupo, not one person. They call it squad. You know, this is squad war. Don't you know? Even in the football, when you watch this, their football. When you see African who are citizen here, let, let's look at Mario Balotelli, who is playing Italy. You know, he is having problem with there. Why? Because he only think of himself that is the star. Then they are telling you, no, you are not the star. There are some people who are who will pass to you, who are working with you recognize them but he doesn't want to recognize that's why they, he's having problem with them because it's not their system they have known this system of god that we work in group you see we work in group okay if it's only you that is playing but you should have been only person on the field why the other 10 people you see there's 11 people who won't be on the pitch to play football so they do it in squad because your neighbor principal your neighbor is very important you pass to me i pass to you you pass on that one you score you see goalkeeper too is very important they those one pass here pass here pass here they pass it to the goalkeeper he catch it then go inside go you see these are the things so that they can at the end win the trophy but we in our place we don't do such things in africa we don't do it only selfishness only myself you see your yourself as the only person you know you see say this one is having a gift you see instead for him to recognize other people you know who we help his greed to grow no it's only who you will be see from there you put yourself inside a coffin a confinement you see that's the meaning of a coffin confinement you confine yourself into one place after what will happen they dump you for the ground, you die there. So that is why you see many gifts are dying. You see, many people are running from Africa. You see, why? Because when they get in Africa, they don't recognize their gifts. But when they get to Europe, these people, not that they, they recognize you, no matter how weak you are. That's why you see many people, they are looking for passport. They are looking for citizens of this Western world because of the fact that they recognize them. They value their gift. No matter how small it is, they will have it before you do it. It becomes something, you know. But in Africa, they'll be looking down there. Which gift do you have? At the end, the country, the continent is doing what? Is suffering. So that is why I want us to understand these things that really God has given us what the 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 blessing in unity. So you cannot do things alone. So that is why Jesus gave us what this parable of the Samaritan. How he he recognized order the little he had he used it to help that man he doesn't know that man if that man now lived you know he cannot become the president of his country supposing he had died pharisee and what do we call it the high priest he passed that way <laughs> not concerning him choir man levi he passed that way <laughs> not be my damn man you see at the end the man will die tomorrow now maybe it's that man god has given that country to become president to make things well or bring an idea like as we are having telephone today it's one man who brought this idea you understand they are passing from generation if that man had died we will not hear of our put today we will not hear of uh, this one macintosh and many things they did like that you know we will not hear of samsung you see most of these things they are name of a person you understand why because they they contributed their part so that is how this world is you know i was reading of a man who he did what who formed the uh who formed was up you know i was reading it some days ago you know this man was working with facebook after some time they said they may not need this other he left he went to join another group of people so when they join other group of people he said so he didn't find it radio. He went to another place. From there, he now decided to be on his own. He's not give in that form, you know, was up uh, messenger. So from there, later on, the idea was also then Facebook called and said, please let's come back. This is a person they employed before. He said, No, he doesn't want to work with you. He said, Why? They said, No, this is my condition, this is my component. 
so they now form ally. Every money that you take to from Facebook, they now become friends. This is what form of a worker of Facebook. So we have to understand this thing. But my people have not understand it. They thought that when God just give you money or give you a status, it's because of your neighbor, because of your people around you. You understand? People around you, that's why God gave you that thing. So please, so we want us to end today so that this is the conclusive part of this world, of this message. And why do we say it? We are not saying it because of what? Eh, let's see. But it's because so that we may change. So that we may change, that we may not fall into the judgment of God. When we talk of judgment of God, I said in some video, God has judged the world already. Not that at the end of the day, God will not say, okay, I want to judge the world. The world has been judged. That's what the Bible says. So this is the judgment. You see, he that ate it is his brethren, his neighbor, is going to a place of destruction. But he that loved his brother, he has life in him. You know, that is what John said. John chapter 4. You say, we see there. He that hated his brother has no life in him. So we have to love our neighbor. We have to love people. Either man, strong, old, young, white, black. We have to love our neighbor. We should not create hatred. Some people now, they hate white people. Some we hate black people. So we should not do that. We are all created by God. What makes people to change? It's the weather. If you are in cold place, you'll be white. Even I saw one white monkey the other day when I was uh, watching one documentary. You know, in the north where there is snow. You see, so the, they are white. You so when I see watch the other documentary in Africa, she said these are black monkey. So you see, it's just the weather. But people they are void of wisdom because they will have entered their heart. Then they will hate white, some will hate black, some will hate you because where you come from. So this is the time. A call of unity, a call of love. This is how God has made it. He made people white, black, brown, whatsoever color. So that what we may live in unity, so that we may bring out the potential in human race. So please, I want you to go over this book again. That is Luke chapter 10 from verse um, from verse uh, 25. You see the, the story there about the neighborhood principle. Because being your neighbor, being the taking care of your neighbor is the only way you say which your neighbor. Neighbor is what Jesus described. Person that you have. You know, your wife could be your neighbor as well. Don't say, okay, because this one is my, you know, your wife, your husband could be your neighbor because he's the one. He may need your help in one way or the other. You understand? Do it. But what some people do, you know, they, they don't help their wife. They don't help their husband who is in their need because they have a, a animosity against them. So this is the word of God. So when we do that, then that is when we are in the path to heaven. Then that is when the word is fulfilled. We are past unto life. We are apart from judgment unto justification. So that because we have done the will of God from our heart, so then God will justify us. So may God help us. So please, I want you to spread this message. Like the video. Please like my fan page on Facebook. Also on YouTube. Subscribe and also press the notification bell so that what you might receive something. And the most things I love most is that I want you to go back to this book and read it. Some people, they don't read the Bible. They thought worshiping God is what? It's just prayer and singing. No, it's not. The Bible says, he that lacks the knowledge of God. You see, when you, 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 don't, you don't read the Bible, the Bible says you are, your prayer will become what? An abomination. Why? Because you'll be doing wrong things. You see, you think it's just what well, to sink. When you sink, then you can do any other. Then you have to read the Bible. So when you read the Bible every day, then you will know the mind of God, the will of God. Just like in a in a country, when you come to a country, they have a constitution. Try and know what is permitted in this country and what is not permitted. So that when you do things that is not permitted, the law will get against you. They will carry you immediately. And put you to prison because the law says you should not do this thing. If it's something that the law says you should do, what will happen? You see, you will still be justified. They will praise you for doing it because there are there are forces. There is police who are meant to to check the law. You know, are you breaking the the same thing with spiritual matter? You see, so when you are doing against the things of God, you know, and you don't know, 
devil will put you in bondage. They will accuse you, you know. So when you are doing the things that pleases God, the angel of God, they'll be promoting you. So that is why, please read the Bible. Make it a daily living. Not only when you go to church, because most of the church even today say, they don't read Bible. What they do is one man, superstar will come out. Just talk, 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 and everybody goes home. If someone will tell you, no need of Bible. It's only his own tautology that people, he will be telling people. But this is a call for us. So when you read your Bible, you know, you, I want you to read your Bible. If you don't understand any place, please, you feel free. You can send a message, you know, to ask, you know. You see my WhatsApp number. You can see my, you know, my, my messenger. You see, or even especially because most of the time I'm busy, you know, you can on this on this uh, pages of this video on your comment section, you can write your question. With that, you know, I'll be notified immediately so that I'll be able to, we can look at it into the word of God. So that maybe I'm an expert, you know, so that we will reason together. You can also correct me because areas that I don't know, so that you can give me what more insight. So may God bless us. So this is the will of God that what we love our neighbor. Neighbor. We care for our neighbor. This is what allows us to enter heaven. You see some countries, you see them, they are living heaven on earth. Why? Because they fulfill this war. We say, oh, this one, they are worshipping idol. They are worshipping the, go and look, the, neighbor, the neighbor, neighborhood principle. They, they, they have the way, the weak. You know, the Bible says, what is the sin of Sodom? When you go to the book of Ezekiel, is it just one thing? They refuse to walk. You know, they said there was abundant of bread. They have abundant. They refuse to help the weak, the orphan, the widow. You see, they refuse. You see, despite God gave them abundant of food. You see, instead of giving people the treat away, they will beat you. They will even rape you, disgrace you. Husband and wife, they will disgrace you. You people, you fall in us. Well, so that is why the Bible says God became annoyed with them. What did God do? He destroyed them. Not even destroyed them. He make a law that nobody will stay in that place again. And when you go to that place, it's made of salt. Nobody stand there. If you go to Israel, you see it. You see the place salt. You see their houses that go in fire and brimstone. In those days, they are still there. You see, you see the shape that this is a place that the Lord once lived. You understand? So this is an example for us, so that we may see the judgment of God. So this thing we are saying, they are truth. That is the lie. So may God help us, so that we will be going to other edition. Please be at a lookout, and may God bless you. In Jesus.